Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to create this volume animation and I really hope you will enjoy this one. And if you do, please don't forget to leave the like and if you're new around here, hit that subscribe. Now let's jump right into empty blender scene and first of all, let's delete the cube and the light. So drag a selection, press X and choose delete and we can leave the camera in place. And now let's press Shift A and we'll start with the circle. And I want to modify this to something like 24. And now tab into the edit mode and we can press F to fill and I to inset like this. And now press I again to inset a little bit more. And now we can press E to extrude this down. And now alt click the outer loop, press E, but right click to release it in place and just press S to scale it up. So this will be the place for the LED lights and we'll have the knob in the middle. So we can tab out now. Let's press Shift A and we'll add another circle. Now let's tap into the edit mode and press S to scale it down like this. And we can additionally move it down. So press G then Z and move it down like here until it starts to disappear and then push it a little bit up and then press F to fill and A to extrude. And just to be sure, press A and Shift N to recalculate the normals. Now we can tab out and let's go back to our first object, tab into the edit mode and we can start creating some details. So let's press 7 on the numpad for a top view, press 3 for face select and let's select this face right here and hold control and start going all around like this until we have something similar here. And now we can press I to inset a shape like that. Okay. And now Let's press G then Z and move it down slightly. And now we'll deselect these. So hold shift and click away and press I to inset. But then press I again to inset individual faces and do something like this. And I want to separate this, but before I do, I want to add some more geometry because later I will be using subdivision surface modifier. So I want to make sure there are some supporting loops. So let's press Ctrl R and create a loop right here and just slide it over right there. And now press Ctrl R again and create another one right here. Okay, like that. And now we'll need to select um, these faces inside. Let's go back to the face select by pressing three. And I want to select these shapes all around and it will be a little bit tedious to do it all around so we can use some of the shortcuts so first of all i will alt click this loop right here and then i will press ctrl and plus to expand the selection if you feel like this is too fast for you or you don't understand some core concepts make sure to check out my courses i carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration, textured environments, and much more. And I build the courses as creative projects, each with its own style. And every time there's a new technique or something needs explaining, we stop for a while and you get an in-depth explanation. But in the end, you still get a full project result. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. And now we can hold Alt and Shift and remove these loops from the selection. That's still a little bit tedious but but all in all i think it's the fastest solution right here and now we can just hold control and remove these from the selection and right here another loop okay and now let's press e to extrude this down and then p and separate selection that will separate it into a new object and now we can tap out select the new object and we can reduce it to only one so let's look from the top again, tap into the edit mode, and we can select all and just hold control, remove these, press X and delete faces. And now we have this part right here that we can duplicate all around. So let's tab out, let's press Shift A and we'll add an empty and plain axis. Now select this part right here, go to the modifiers panel and let's add a mirror modifier right there. And let's turn off relative offset and let's enable object offset and let's pick the empty. And now if we select the empty and rotate it, you will see the duplicate is rotating all around. So now we just rotated 15 degrees. So let's press R, then 15 and confirm. And now back in the array modifier, we can just increase the count 
like this. And those will be our lights when we are turning the knob on. And now let's just press Shift A. And let's create a circle. Tab into the edit mode and let's make it a little bit larger. And then press F to fill. And, and we'll press G then Z and move it down a little bit. Like this. Now tab out. And select the one with the array. Tab into the edit mode. And press A. Press G then Z and move it until it appears over the new circle that we just created. Okay, like that. And now let's just clean up the scene a little bit. So I will select this object right here, tap into the edit mode, and we can just press two for edge select, alt click this loop and basically scale it indefinitely like this. And now keep it selected and let's add a bevel modifier. And let's go to the geometry section and switch this to arc. Increase the segments to two and reduce the amount a little bit like this and we can press ctrl 2 to add subdivision surface modifier you will see it added here and now we have this nice hard surface look right click and shade smooth and now let's do the same thing for the knob so i'll select it add the bevel modifier increase the number of segments and reduce the amount like this maybe even three segments will be fine and now press Ctrl 2 to add the subdivision surface modifier, right click and shade smooth. And now I want to create a hole in here for another light. So let's tap into the edit mode, press 3 for face select, select the top face, hold Shift S and snap cursor to select it. Now tap out and let's press Shift A and we'll add cylinder. And we can reduce to something like 24. Tap into the edit mode and press S and scale it down like this. Then tap out, press G then X and move it to the side here just like that. And for the next step to work, we just need to go edit preferences, add-ons and search for bool tool and just check the box and close the preferences. And now we can hold shift, select the knob and press control and minus on an ampad to create a Boolean operation there and make sure you select this part right here, right click and shade smooth. But now you'll get this weird shading. So we'll need to take care of that. So let's select the knob and we'll add another modifier. Let me collapse these. And let's add smooth by angle right here in the normal section. And that will take care of these edges right there. So now let's select the cylinder. Hold Shift S snap cursor to select it. And let's press Shift A and we'll add another circle. Tab into the edit mode and scale it down here. Press F to fill and G then Z to move it down. So we fill it up here. Tab out and now hold Shift. Select this part right here, then the knob and press Ctrl P and parent to object. So now we are able to rotate this around the Z axis. And now let's press 7 on the numpad to look from the top. Select the knob and we'll rotate it right here. I think it's like minus 40 degrees and let's confirm. And basically this is ready for the animation. But now let's take care of the looks. So we'll set up some render settings and some lighting. So let's go render settings switch to cycles i will use gpu and enable denoising and gpu for the denoising as well and for the animation i will use something like 128 and now if i go to the rendered preview this will be too dark and since i want to use a lot of like reflective materials here um, i want to take advantage of hdri lighting and i have here in my asset browser all the HDRIs from the Polyhaven um, got them through their add-on. So I just can go here in the studio settings and choose something with high contrast. I have these studio HDRIs here. In case you don't have this option, I will show you how you can plug the HDRI yourself. Um, let me just first drag some of them here in the scene. You will see it will just work and light our scene. So in case you don't have this option right here with the asset browser, let me just go back to the timeline here. You can just go to the Polyhaven, go to HDRIs, locate the same HDRI and just download it. And once you have it down, you can just go to the shading menu, switch to world. And you can see I have the Studio Small 04 node group right there. That's from the add-on, but I can just unplug it. And I can drop the texture right here and plug it into the surface. And that will basically give you the same thing. So let me go back here because I don't want to do that here. I want to use the node group 
for the convenience go back to the layout and now i'll select the knob and let me add some more geometry here so tap into the edit mode and i want to do an inset here and let's go to material settings create a new one and i want to go full metallic here but here in the specular section i want to increase anisotropic that will give us the nice brushed metal look and let's select the surrounding object right here and let's create a new material let's give this metallic and i want to go a little bit darker here and play with the roughness maybe a little bit less rough like this and now let's hold shift s snap cursor to world origin now let's press shift a and we'll add a light area light press g then z and move it up and we can press g then shift z to move it on x and y axis and place it somewhere here behind and we can play with the power here and with the color as well to make this look okay and i'm looking for a camera shot like this so with the camera already in the scene we can hold ctrl and alt and hit zero on an numpad to place the camera and then select it and press g to reposition and then g then z twice to move it further back and now let's select this object right here let's create a new material and i will switch principle to emission and increase the strength to something like five maybe even 15 we'll see what works the best and now let's give this some color like this and now i'll do the same for this one and now we only have this circle that creates basically the background there so let's create a new one and just make it all the way dark and that's the basic scene setup now to make this a little bit easier for the gpu let's press ctrl b and limit the preview only for the camera bounds and now we can start animating so on the frame one i can go here and set the array count to one right click and insert keyframe and then let's move to something like frame 60 let's increase this to somewhere here for example right click and insert keyframe and now we'll take care of the knob so let's select it go back to frame one and let's press n for the side panel and here in the item menu right click and insert single keyframe on the z rotation and now let's look from the top by pressing 7 on an numpad and let's go to frame 60 and now we can find the right angle so it's like minus 140 so let's enter that right here right click and insert single keyframe now if you play back the animation let's make sure the length of the animation is no more than 80 here and then in the output settings let's switch this to 30 fps and now if i play it back we have this nice volume animation here and if you're satisfied with it you can enable the motion blur right here and in the output settings switch the output to ffmpeg with mp4 encoding here just enter your folder and go render render animation and wait out your frames and of course you can do some more work here uh you know play with the materials add some more lights and maybe add a soundtrack and animate you know camera movements uh, based on music so so wherever your creativity will take you so that's it for the quick animation tutorial today i really hope you enjoyed this one and again if you did please leave that like and if you're new around here hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day